Scientists working at HARP have just revealed their current research program is unprecedented. For those unaware, the HARP is a high-frequency active auroral research program, and it consists of 180 antennas which are designed to transmit signals into the ionosphere. According to HARP's website, the high-frequency active auroral research program or HARP is a scientific endeavour aimed at studying the properties and behaviour of the ionosphere. The ionosphere stretches roughly 50 to 400 miles above Earth's surface, right at the edge of space. Along with the neutral upper atmosphere, the ionosphere forms the boundary between Earth's lower atmosphere, where we live and breathe and the vacuum of space. End quote. The High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program facility revealed their most recent science campaign and said that they plan to bounce signals off the Moon and Jupiter. The researchers said that the ionosphere helps with radio transmission and that the plan is to bounce signals off the Moon and Jupiter. Jessica Matthews, HOP's program manager, said the following. The October research campaign is our latest and most diverse to date, with the researchers and citizen scientists collaborating from across the globe. The 10 days of operation includes researchers and others from UAF, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, Naval Research Laboratory, Cornell University, University of California, Berkeley, Canada Council for the Arts, John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, Virginia Tech, Los Alamos National Lab, and Aerospace Corp. The University of Alaska Fairbanks said the following about the mission on their website. The number of experiments is the highest so far. 9.3 million grants awarded last year for the National Science Foundation to establish the Suboral Geophysical Observatory at HARMP. The observatory's purpose is the exploration of Earth's upper atmosphere and geospace environment. Among the experiments is the Moon Bounce, a joint operation of GPL, Owens Valley Radio Observatory in California, and the University of New Mexico Long Wavelength Array. The purpose is to test the coordination of the three facilities for the eventual study of near-Earth asteroids especially those that can be hazardous to Earth. Knowing an asteroid's composition can influence the type of defence that's used. End quote. Harp continued with the following on their website. Operation of the research facility was transferred from the United States Air Force to the University of Alaska Fairbanks on August 11, 2015 allowing HARP to continue with the exploration of ionospheric phenomena via a land use cooperative research and development agreement. HARP is the world's most capable high power, high frequency transmitter for study of the ionosphere. The HARP program is committed to developing a world class ionospheric research facility consisting of the ionospheric research instrument a high-power transmitter facility operating in the high-frequency range. The IRI can be used to temporarily excite a limited area of the ionosphere for scientific study. A sophisticated suite of scientific or diagnostic instruments that can be used to observe the physical processes that occur in the excited region. Observation of the processes resulting from the use of IRI in a controlled manner will allow scientists to better understand the processes that occur continuously under the natural stimulation of the sun. Scientific instruments installed at the HARP Observatory can be used for a wide variety of continuing research efforts, which do not involve the use of IRI but are strictly passive. These include ionospheric characterization using satellite beacons, telescopic observation of the fine structures in the aurora, and documentation of long-term variations in the ozone layer. End quote. Interestingly, a few years back, strange lights were seen above the facility, which caused locals to question what was going on. To add to this mystery, a pilot then took some photographs and said they didn't know what could be causing it. 
one NASA researcher came forward with a possible explanation, saying that the HARP station which can be found in Alaska might be responsible. They said the following, I could imagine that something from the solar wind, possibly a small highly energized bubble that penetrated the protective shield of the magnetosphere, hit the Earth's uppermost atmosphere and produced this very local effect. Alternatively, the ionospheric research station known as HARP, or the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program, might have sent some powerful microwave beams into the ionosphere and created this local instability. The dominant colours in the photographs are green and red. The green appears to be the same as the aurora lights, which are known to arise from an electronically highly excited state of oxygen atoms decaying to the ground state by emitting light at 557.7 nanometers." End quote. Due to various theories being shed around about the facility, many of which scientists say are not true, the University of Alaska Fairbanks invited people to tour the facility. They said the following on their website. The University of Alaska Fairbanks invites the public to join the 2022 HARP Open House. This event provides an opportunity for the public to see this world-class research facility firsthand and to learn about the science questions the facility seeks to answer. They continue by saying that HARP's mission is a simple one. The high-frequency active Aurora Research Program began in 1990 as a Congress initiative to expand our knowledge of the Earth's upper atmosphere and their effects on radio wave propagation. Particular emphasis was placed on being able to understand and use it to enhance communications and surveillance systems for both civilian and defense purposes. Between 1990 and 2014, HARP was a jointly managed program of the United States Air Force and the United States Navy its goal was to research the physical and electrical properties of the Earth's ionosphere, which can affect our military and civilian communication and navigation systems. So what do you make of these recent announcements? And what do you make of the HARP facility? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.